So Hosea, Mary, Gomer. Somebody say Hosea. Hosea. Somebody say Gomer. Gomer. Somebody say the blame. Father, in the name of Jesus, oh, we thank you. We give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. Lord, help me help them today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. High five somebody and say, De blame. <laughs> Who is the blame? Who is the blame? So we have been uh, continuing on in this series. We've been going forward in this series. And we've been talking about Hosea, right? We've been talking about Hosea. And we've been talking about Gomer and how God came to Hosea. And he said, I want to use you to preach an illustrative message. I'm going to use you to preach. I'm going to use your life to preach an illustrative message. I wonder today, can God preach an illustrative message with your life? I wonder, if, can God teach an illustrative message with your life? I'm, I'm, I'm just wondering today, will, will God be able to teach using your life? I, 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 so, so as we, no, thank you, Jesus. I'm, I'm going to need my laptop, guys. I'm going to need my laptop, please. As we move forward in this, uh, 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 this series, I, 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 I wanted to just stop for a second and, and talk about Gomer. I wanted to talk about Gomer. Because a lot of times we look at Gomer and we talk about Gomer as a prostitute. But we never really talk about who Gomer is. Or how she became the way she became. We talk about Gomer all the time as a, as a prostitute. But we never really get into who she is. We never really talk about the value of who Gomer is and how she became how she became. You can just leave it right back there. And today I want to spend a, just a little bit of time talking about who Gomer is and, and how she became that way. And in order to do that, I'm going to have to examine her past. Now, let me let you know the problem with the past. The problem with the past is that if you get caught up in the past, you become a prisoner of it. But you got to look at the past because the past is the precursor to the present. And it is the, it is the premonition to what your future will look like. And in fact, for most of us, you've heard me give this illustration that really all you can see is the past. You only get glimpses of the future. As you are rolling to your future, you only are going to get glimpses of the future. Your eyes are going to be only on your past. But that's difficult because of two reasons. Really, uh, if, you, if, you, if you really think back or if you really think about it, your past has the propensity to imprison you. If your past was great, if your past was wonderful, then you compare everything in your present to your past. If your past was wonderful, you was the high school uh, quarterback, you scored six touchdowns in one game, you spend all your time talking about how great you were in high school. You spend all your time talking about how wonderful you were back in the day. Oh man, back in the day, I was this. Back in the day, I was that. Back in the day. And you become a prisoner of your past. Some of y'all know people 40, 50 years old. They still talking about high school. They are prisoners of the past. The past is also bad. You become a prisoner of the past because uh, sometimes when the, when the past is bad, you become a prisoner of it. And you think because it happened in the past, it's going to happen in the future. You think that, that, that because it happened in your past, because you didn't get what you wanted to get, or it didn't work out the way you expected it to work out in your past, that somehow that's relative completely to your future. And it keeps you from getting to your future because you live with the doubts of your past. Today I want to take a look into Gomer's past, but I, 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 I don't want to do it for long because the past will pull you in. I want to just take a glimpse into Gomer's past, but I don't want to do it for long because the, the past will pull you down. You'll be stuck thinking about what happened, thinking about why it didn't work out, thinking about that relationship. That cologne. Yeah, I got somebody. 
thinking about that girl or that one or that uh, or that job that got away. I, I, so I want to deal with the past. And in order to do that, we got to sort of look at the Bible from what it tells us about Gomez's past. And the truth is, Mario, not much. It tells us that Hosea married a woman named Gomer. And that Gomer was a prostitute. But it doesn't really tell us how she got that way. I, I venture to say that nobody's born a prostitute. Nobody's born a prostitute. In fact, there's some mistranslations. The, uh, some people will say, we're born sinners, but that's a mistranslation. You are born into sin. You are shaped in iniquity. You are born into a nature of sin. That doesn't mean you're born a prostitute. And that shouldn't excuse your prostitutinal behavior. But, so Gomer wasn't born, born a prostitute. She was born a beautiful, bouncing baby. Somebody loved her. So how did she become who she became? The only thing that we can, the only story we have about her past is this. The Bible says he married Gomer and she was from the blame. She was from the blame. She was from the blame. Now I have a problem, Pastor Ravon. Who is Who is the blame? Who is the blame for my problems? Who is the blame for my issues? Who is the blame? Who is, how did I become? Who is the blame? Who is the blame? Who is the blame for how you became who you became? Who is the blame? Who, where, where did this come from? Now, you'd be surprised to know that there is some spiritual theological contention about what this word means. There is not a universal agreement on what the blame means. Some people say that it's a place. It's a place. It's a place. The blame, the blame is a place. And that she is the daughter. She is the daughter of that city. She is the daughter of that place. And if, she, and if the Bible says it, if the Bible says anything, it gives it a reason. I wonder what the reason was if she was from that city. Was it known for uneducated, lowly people? Was it known for prostitutes? Was it the Las Vegas of the town? Maybe. What, what, what was it? What was it? What, what, what is it in your past? What is it? Where are you from? That, that people automatically push you to the side. They automatically neglect you because they heard you was from the east side. Or they heard you was from this city or that city. They say, oh, you from Chicago. Nothing good can come out of Sh Chicago. Nothing good can come out of Detroit. Nothing good can come out of Sam Houston. Nothing good can come out of John Jay. And at some point, you start to become identified with the place that you came from. Everybody else gang banging, I might as well gang bang. Everybody else acting bad, I might as well act bad. And I become connected with the place that I came from. Some of us came from broken homes. So all we know is broken homes. Because that's the place where it's the place where we came from. What's connected to the place where you came from? What's connected to the place that you came from that you blame for where you are now? Who is to blame? Sometimes you'll meet people, oh, thank you, Jesus, hear my heart right here. Sometimes you'll meet people in a season. You'll meet people in an in a area, in a space. You'll meet people in a season, and you'll say, I think I know that person. I think I recognize that person. And the truth is, you don't know them. You know where they came from. And you judge them based on where they came from. I wonder who's to blame. Second thing they say, the blame, the blame is a masculine. In, in Hebrew, it is a masculine word. So a lot of times we're associated with her father. You say maybe he's the daughter. And, that, and that, a lot of times that's what's the most widely accepted, that it is her father. The blame is her father. 
I wonder what kind of father she had. I wonder what kind of father she had that she became who she became. Maybe, 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 just maybe. Maybe, maybe, just maybe. She is the product of her father. They say that a person gets the most from their closest male role model. They get the most from their closest male role model. And I could have saved this for Father's Day, but I want to help you right now. What, is, what are you modeling for your children today, Dad? Are you modeling a spirit of prostitution in your house? What are you modeling for your future children? What are you modeling for them? What does she see in her father? Maybe in the way that he treated her mother. Maybe he didn't love on her properly. Maybe he didn't take care of her properly. And because he treated her mother like she wasn't nothing, maybe, maybe, just maybe, Gomez walked into the world thinking she wasn't nothing. It's possible that you can mess with the mind of a 40-year-old woman when she's four years old. It's possible by your actions, by the way you treat her, Father, by the way you treat her mother, Father, that she becomes who she becomes. Maybe, maybe, as we peel back the layers of her past, we find out that her father was one of the reasons that she is who she is. Maybe it's where she's from. Maybe it was her father. Maybe she was neglected. Maybe, maybe, maybe he worked so hard. Maybe he worked so hard all the time. He worked so hard trying to provide a living for her that he didn't provide a spiritual existence for her. Sometimes as parents, we can work so hard trying to provide a living for our children that we're never present. That we're never present to actually speak into their lives. Maybe, just maybe, she was neglected so much. Maybe she was loved into neglect. This is the new thing. This is the new, new. This is what parents do. We love our children all the way to neglect. We love them so hard and we love them so much that we're never there to actually spend time with them. We spend so much time trying to get them all the things that we never had, but we never are there to actually connect with them. What happened to Gomer? Who is to blame? Finally, there, there's a, there's a, there's a small sect that believes the blame is her mother. Because the word de blame literally has a, a, it's a compound word. And it means this, it means two cakes. And there is a, a sect of believers that actually believe that her mother was a known prostitute and her nickname was two cakes. That, 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 her mother, that her mother was a known prostitute and because her mother was a prostitute, the only thing she ever saw was prostitution and therefore she became what she saw. See, 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 some of you, oh, thank you, Jesus. All you became is what you saw. It's not your fault. You became what you became because you just became what you saw. You never had anything positive in your life. You never had a positive role model. You never had anything and so you're just doing the best you can with what you saw. I wonder, I wonder who's to blame. I wonder who's to blame. I wonder if her mother, if her mother showed her how to do it. Taught her. Thought she was teaching her how to take care of herself. Maybe she, she thought she was teaching her how to be a, a good, uh, a, a, a good businesswoman. Maybe she thought she was teaching her how to, how to, how to take care of herself in the streets, but really she was, I want you to bring this all the way home because it's, 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 it's not just about her. Who's to blame for you? For your sins, for your stuff, for your mess. Who do you blame? Who do you reach to? Is it your mother? Is it your father? Is it your, is it, what, what is it? Is it your past? Is it where you came from? What is it that is keeping you bound up in sin and bondage? What is it? Who do you blame? Why you are the way you are? Is it the way you were raised? Who do, who do, who do? How, how, how come? 
you became the way you were. So as we look deeper into the past of Go Mary, I feel that I feel that she's been. We're being pulled back into the past because in order to deal with the past, sometimes we, we, there's a propensity for us to get stuck in the past. Sometimes there's something that happened to you when you were 10 years old, 11 years old, 12 years old, 15 years old, and you've never matured past that place. You got hurt in that place. You got hurt when you were 12. You got hurt when you were 18. You got hurt when you were 21 and you haven't matured. You're stuck in that same place. The past will pull you down. It'll keep you locked in that same place. And you thought you were free. And you walk like you're free. And you talk like you're free. But really, you're, you're stuck in the past. Stuck in the same place. Stuck in the same situation. Stuck in the same environment. You keep dating new men, but they're actually just the old men regurgitated. You keep finding new women trying to Fix something that's broken in here that was broken since you was 11 years old. So you date another person and you date another person and you date another person. But really, 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 you don't have the ability to love. And they keep expecting something out of you that you're not able or equipped to give them. See, 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 we, we titled this series Unlovable. But it's really not unlovable. It's unloveable. See, some of us, it's not that we are not able to be loved. It's that we are not able to love. We don't know how to love. We are unloveable. We are not able to love. And so what we do, oh, thank you, Jesus. What we do is we substitute prostitution for love. Some of you say, no, 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 not prostitution. Okay, alcohol. Okay, cigarettes. Okay, lying. Okay, mischievousness. Whatever it is, you found a substitute because you don't have the ability to love. Something happened when you were young. Something took your ability away to love. And today, I just want to help you. I want to help you find your way back. I want to help you find your way back because it doesn't matter who your mother is. And it doesn't matter who your father is. And it doesn't matter your propensities or your, uh, uh, your, your desires or your addictions. The only thing that matters is your ability to love. I looked at Gomer. I said, Jesus, I understand why she was a prostitute. She had no ability. She had no ability to love. And sometimes in church... We're expecting people to do things that they don't have the ability or capacity to do. Sometimes in relationships, you marry into a relationship with somebody who has no ability or capacity to do what you need from them. And you find yourself wanting, but the truth is, you marry somebody who is unloved able. You're in relationship with somebody who is unloved able. You go to church with somebody who is unloved, able. If only there was somebody in the church who was able. If only there was somebody in the house who was able. I, I know a lot of people who are unable, but I, I need one person in my life who is able. I've been praying for somebody in my life who is able now unto him that is there is this Jesus and I don't know about you but my Bible tells me that Jesus is able come on give God some praise give God some praise if you know that Jesus is able See, Hosea represents Jesus in this story. And God tells, God tells Hosea, go back and get your wife, man. Go back and get her. I know she's not able. I know she doesn't know how. I know she doesn't, she, she doesn't know how to love. She doesn't know how to worship. She doesn't know how to be a good Christian. You got to teach her, Jesus. 
So the Bible said Jesus stepped down from stepped down from his throne. And he came down to somebody who was unlovable. And he said, Come here, daughter, come here, come here, come here, baby girl. I'll teach you. I'll teach you. I'll show you. I know you came to me messed up. I know you came to me all messed up. I know you came to me pulled down by your past. But I'm here to pick you up. For thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. My glory and the lifter up of my head. He lifts up 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 my head. Even when I didn't know how to raise my hands, he teaches me how to put my hands up. Even when I didn't know how to give him glory, he teaches me how to give he said, take, your, take this yoke upon you and learn of me. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Take this yoke upon me. Take this yoke and learn of me. Learn what? Learn how to love. Learn how to love. Learn how to love again. He said, I'll teach you how to walk. I'll teach you how to walk again. If you didn't know how to walk, I'll teach you how to walk. If you didn't know how to pray, I'll teach you how to pray. If you don't know how to lift your hands, I'll teach you how to lift your hands. I'll teach you. I'll be patient with you, Gomez. It doesn't matter what happened to you in your past. I'll be patient with you. It doesn't matter what your mama did. It doesn't matter what your father did. I'll teach you how to dance. I'll teach you how to dance again. I'll teach you how to dance again. I'll teach you how to love again. I'll teach you how to be faithful again. I'll teach you. I'll teach you. I'll teach you. See, we come from a society where we think we got to teach people something before they come to church. But we serve a God who says, if you come, I'll teach you. If you come, I'll teach you. Truth is, he'll, he'll come to you. He'll teach you how to step. He'll teach you how to walk. He'll teach you how to talk. He'll teach you how to love again. The Bible says he sings over his people. And he dances. He dances. We serve a God who, who dances. He takes somebody who was all messed up with their past. He washes them clean. And then he sets up their future. See, the beautiful thing about Jesus, oh, thank you, Lord, is that you don't have to have anything. You don't have to bring anything to him. He's bringing it all to you. He's bringing it all to you. You don't have to bring anything. If you are willing, Jesus is able. If you are willing, Jesus is able. If you are willing, Jesus is. And then he gets down on one knee and proposes to a prostitute. You see, she, she never changed who she was. She never changed who she was. He changed who she was. She didn't stop doing bad. She didn't stop doing wrong. He loved her through it. He loved her through it. I'm looking for one or two people that can testify that God loved you through it. It didn't stop all at the same time. It didn't stop all at once. But God loved you through it. And he offers a proposal to a prostitute. We, we, the church, we, we are Gomer. We, we are Gomer. And here's Jesus proposing to you. You don't have anything to give. 
He has everything, but he says, I got it for you. I did it for you. I fixed it. I did it for you. I did it for you. And I'll wrap you in my arms and I'll make you white as snow. Can we give God some glory right now for a God who, who has everything and who loves us unconditionally? Can we give God some praise for a God who has everything and loves us unconditionally? He loves he loves us. He loves us unconditionally. He loves us unconditionally. Listen. Today I want to offer you the same thing that Hosea offered. Go, man. Life change. You don't have to be the same anymore. This is the moment. This is the day. Everything can change right now. God loves you so much. He cares about you so much. We serve a God who loves us. Oh, how he loves us. He says, I presented my body as a living, as a sacrifice. So all you have to do is present your body as a sacrifice. He said, I gave you my life. So all you got to do is give me your life. And I'll fix it. I'll make it better. I, I, you don't have to change. I'll change you. says all you got to do is come, 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 come daughter, come son, come, come, come to me all ye that are heavy laden and I'll give you rest, come, 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 this is the moment, come, God is saying come, 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 you don't have any reason to cry anymore, you don't have any reason to shed tears anymore, God loves you, he cares about you, and all you have to do is be willing, if you're willing, he's able.